tell us first of all uh, for the for the audience about David Livingstone and how he of all people, uh, given his status in Scottish history, has found himself embroiled after all these years in uh, in the in the anti-slavery invective. Yes, he's one of the great moral giants of the nineteenth century, one of the great Scots uh, of the period, and. Um, Glasgow City Council has uh, brought out this report in which he's named um, in a report entitled, um, I think I have it here, yes, Slavery and Atlantic Commerce. And he's criticised, get this, uh, for having worked in a factory which he had no control over, it was, it was owned by somebody else, at the age of 10, which was when he started working there, um, in incredibly tough conditions, by the way, working between uh, 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. a day, 14-hour day. Um, and he, but because he was working on cotton that had been picked in the West Indies by slaves, he was born in 1813, um, while slavery was still, um, was still legal in the West Indies, um, he, for some reason, is being criticised, even though he was one of the great uh, abolitionists, one of the leading people um, who fought for the abolition of slavery. And he, he gave his life, effectively, in terms of the toll it took upon him, in trying to transform Africa for the betterment of, of people of African countries, did he not? It, it seemed oh, that's right. look and, inconceivable and, and, that he would be targeted in this way. And he's hugely admired in Africa. There are, um, there are schools named after him, there are, there are towns named after him, there are plaques put up to him in uh, Malawi and uh, Tanzania and Botswana and Kenya and Zambia. But the only place he is not honoured is in his own home uh, town of uh, Glasgow. Given who David Livingstone was and, and what he still stands for in terms of being an, an, an anti-slavery uh, missionary and, and all that he sought to do for the betterment of people on the African continent. Is it possible to suggest or to discern another motive why he would be being targeted in this way? Well, this is, of course, very interesting all to do with the, with the woke uh, culture. Uh, this is in many ways the sort of furthest it's got. Um, although I noticed, of course, that last year the National Trust also mentioned Churchill in a report that it had on colonialism and slavery, even though Winston Churchill also fought against uh, slavery. Um, I think that uh, um, the best person to ask about this is, is Professor Doug Stokes of University of Exeter, and he has tied it in very much with what he calls um, the seeming endless virtue signalling of our cultural and political institutions. I think that's really the explanation for this. It's certainly not a historical explanation. It's not evidence-based, and it's not logical, frankly. Andrew, I'd like to involve the, my, my, my guests in, in the studio with me. Madeline, I don't know about you, but this sounds to me like if you're, if you're in, the, in the business of bringing down people uh, on the grounds that they were involved in slavery, this feels like clutching at straws. It's just perverse and shocking. I mean, it, it, the idea that, as, as, as you pointed out, that the idea that a 10-year-old working in a mill somehow bears more, more responsibility for the goods that they are manufacturing, the provenance of those goods, that those goods is just beyond extraordinary. It's, it's perhaps the most flagrant example we've had, but it's been, I think, sort of edging ever closer to this. Um, so, in a way, it's not surprising. And there may be some more kind of through-the-looking-glass type moments. But when you think of also of how... Um, the way that David Livingston helped shape public opinion of the time, writing so movingly of the, the horror and the, the suffering of people who were involved in slavery in Africa, that had a huge effect on um, public opinion um, back in Britain as well. Um, so he did a great deal to bring us closer to the age of enlightenment that we're in. The great irony is that the people who are doing this, they feel that they are now the enlightened ones. Oh, careful with you, Mike. Lemba, are we... Is this... If, if, if we're going to target, if Glasgow Council is going to target David Livingstone, about whom we've heard so much this evening, yeah. are, are we reaching the end of the line for those who are looking for targets? This is just the beginning. The problem we've... God, as we've reached the end of the line for many people about things that are really worth campaigning for. 
as Livingston did. Why not go for Robert Owen? Uh, I know a lot about him. I did a series about him. He essentially created the co cooperative movement, very big hot person. He still had people who were younger than today's legal working age. Let's punish him. For, for, for not getting it right in today's mm -hmm. um, contemporary terminology. The issue we've got is we're judging the past according to present day and fashion orientated values. So in 100 years time when they watch this, we've probably used some language which is going to be offensive in, in 21, 22, and then we'll be cancelled. The statue, which will inevitably be a view outside these studios, uh, Mr Oliver, will be pulled down. That's what I think is going wrong. We're trying to rewrite history. It used to be called airbrushing people out. And that means you forget the lessons of history, which is far more dangerous than recognising them. Andrew, uh is this actually going to happen? As I understand it, this is just something that's being uh, proposed or discussed. Uh, if you were a betting man, how likely would you think it is that, that David Livingstone's statue will be removed from its plinth? If the locals are asked, then it's not going to happen. The great thing about all this wokery is that whenever it's actually put to the people, uh, whenever these um, uh, imperialists or explorers or, in this case, abolitionists uh, are... Um, are actually they're, they're pulling down of their statues. The people are asked. It happened recently in Watford with uh, lots of uh, name changes of streets and so on. Um, people who've grown up with these statues and appreciate just what uh, Madeline and Lembit so rightly said just then um, always vote against it. The problem, of course, is if it's just uh, um, kept within a small group of uh, of officials at uh, City Hall and uh, and they are led by their woke beliefs rather than what the people genuinely want. Historian Andrew Roberts, thank you so much for being with us this evening and helping us you know, better to understand uh, at least what it is that's being suggested by, uh, by Glasgow Council uh, and we will hopefully uh, hear that a, a, a resolution has been reached that doesn't involve the removal of that statue.